Hey guys, how we doing? Hey, wanted to reach out and well, not really reach out, but just create a video to really look at our class in its totality. And as a student, how, how can you best attack this class and really approach it in a way that, you know, puts you in a position to where you can really, really learn as much as you possibly can and to really, you know, tap into that capacity with your learning and of course your performance when it comes to this class. So I wanted to create a short video on really how to approach that. And so a couple of things to talk about is, you know, how to approach our reading, our, our quizzes, and then our exams. And then we have many other things that are built into this class. But what I'm looking at here is, you know, putting all, pulling all this together, how to really attack it. And if I were to wrap any word around it, it would really be to how to optimize your learning. And so the first thing I want to talk about is my philosophy and approach in terms of learning psychology and the beautiful space that that occupies with us is progressive. And it's an, a progressive approach that you're going to find with this class that allows you to build skills slowly as you, as you progress your way through the material. And we do this in a variety of ways, but let me give you a specific example is with our connect questions. And so when you're reading the textbook, I really try to create a platform uh, for you so that it kind of guides you as to where to go. And so you're going to start by reading your textbook. And some of you get the, you might get the e book, you might get the hard copy book, but you need to have an access code so that as you're reading the questions, you can, you can't complete your reading connect questions assignment. All right. And this is really low risk. I call it low risk. And this is also the progressive way to learn, meaning you get in there, you read the book, and then you just answer some questions. And they're very, uh, not basic, but they're low risk questions. And you can, you know, take the quiz. It's not really a quiz, but really the reading questions multiple times. And they're, 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 the questions are really more definitions, general concepts. And so again, it's progressive. It starts really with the nuts and bolts of theories and models of behavior and things that we'll learn in this class. We start with that. And so, you know, really take your time. And, and really, I want to make this video just so that you understand why we're doing certain things. The Reading Connect questions are not there to provide uh, a lot of advanced or conceptual frameworks, meaning that they're not going to be that difficult in nature because we're, we're really just trying to build vocabulary and we're trying to understand definitions and concepts and you get credit for that. So that's that first progression. From there, we start to get into our our quizzes. So you'll notice how we have quizzes that will be coming up and those are untimed, but more specifically driven towards specific concepts and they're more difficult. OK, so they're a little bit more applied type of questions, but they're still low risk. OK, so I want to be really clear with that so that you can feel not feel, but you have a thought that you're going to be able to attack this without running the risk of being penalized for learning. And a big part of learning is making mistakes, going out, understanding what mistakes you made and then figuring out how to, how to correct those. OK, so we don't want to we don't want to waste mistakes. We want to make those mistakes without having the penalty that comes on the back end of that. So that's the, the quizzes that are untimed. You can take those multiple times. You'll see it within the instructions. And then the next progression is our timed quizzes. And this does come with a little bit of penalty meaning that I'm going to test you now. So it's a quiz, but it's really more of an, a test and assessment for what you know. By the time you get to your first timed quiz, uh, it will have points that are assigned and you will not be able to go back and retake it. And so it's just really a test, a test of what you know. So tests are good because it shows you where you're at and what you know at this point. So the, if you can see the progression with the reading connect questions, very low risk, building framework, basic vocabulary, models, and then we start getting to the untimed quizzes where you can take them multiple times, and then it's a little bit more specific, a little bit more challenging. Then we get to the time quizzes where it's really a formal assessment. And with those, you won't be able to go back, redo. You will not be able to even see the answers. And the reason is, again, because you've already seen answers with many questions that you've, asked, that, that you've been asked your quizzes with your connect questions by the time you get to your timed 
quiz, it's really more of an assessment. So you won't get a tremendous amount of feedback specifically on the correct answer because you've already had gotten that so many times. And it comes with a little bit of penalty. And that could be a good thing. Again, the research is really clear when it comes to providing a little bit of that tension so that you can really, it can increase your attention, your focus, and you can hone in on your skills of testing yourself so that you know where you're at. And then finally is the exams. You know, we have three exams in this course, but they're all different. Okay. Some of them are multiple choice questions, Q and A, and then well, keep questions. And then there's others that might be essay format. And then we have, we have a variety of ways of assessing, but those are more, again, that's a test. And so you don't get a lot of, when I say feedback, you don't get that immediate, here's the answer. And there's reasons for that. We want to really just to see where you're at. And we want you, most importantly, we want you to have a feel for where you're at. And so I wanted to start with that and just explain the progression and the reason why we do that. We start really low risk just so you can kind of know where you're at. And then we start building on the skills and then we get all the way up to that. The highest level would be an exam, okay, where, where it does count. And it's a, it's a holistic approach. And again, my, my approach to you and in, in general with the class is about learning. It's not necessarily just about chasing points. So really it's about understanding you know, acquiring skills, acquisition of the psychological principle. So we're looking at learning overall. That's my approach in a holistic way. And with this, though, I want to be clear with the delivery. We have reading connect questions. I lecture. I have multiple hours of lectures that are pre-recorded. But I also want to say as a critical thinker on your end, and when you're looking at really trying to attack this class, don't feel that you just need to read or listen to or watch a video that's been prescribed, meaning, hey, go to this chapter, do this, do that, and reading connect questions, or watch my lecture videos and just read a section of the chapter uh, within the book. Don't feel that you need to do that because you want to re you want to try to take everything in. And what I mean is just don't feel that you need to just read what's assigned. The reality is to best learn material is to take it in, in its totality, really trying to take it all in. Now, how is it that you do that? Everybody's a little bit different. Some people read, you know, verbatim, word to word. Some people really look at all the concepts at the end of the chapter, but that's for you to sort that out. And of course, I can help you if you reach out to me and I can really try, we can work together to pin down your style. And so again, we want to look at this in a progressive manner and we want to really try to take it all in and not just, you know, learn in isolation. Uh, and again, from my perspective as, as a professor, I can't just go and I'm not going to do that. I don't think that's the best way to learn, meaning that I'm not going to just go and, and assign all this stuff for no reason just because it's in a te textbook. I mean, we, that would be three classes when it comes to the volume of work. And so I'm really trying to guide you in a specific area. However, learning in general is best suited for those that take in the general concepts, pull it all together, instead of just reading certain parts of the chapter. Hopefully that makes sense. So we want to really try to take it all in as best as we can. And then the lecture recordings that I have made, again, dozens of hours, I want to be really mindful with how I go about really right now describing what I did and why I did what I did. But you want to go in and watch those lectures, take notes. Everybody's different again with how they go about doing that. I've had to uh, really find the sweet spot when it comes to lecturing with detail versus zooming out and lecturing with more generality. And the reason is because if I were to lecture with extreme detail, you would be watching videos for the rest of the semester and that's all you'd be doing. It would be so voluminous and I would miss, most of you would check out mentally by the time you were halfway through. So, you know, I don't, this class is not, does not design that way. I do get a little bit more in depth in certain areas because it's really fundamental and it's more important, whether it's research methods or the nerve cell, neurotransmission, whatever it might be. I'm detailed in certain areas, but I kind of zoom out. I'm more general because the, the way lectures work, just like if you were to come to a face-to-face -face class, lectures are to provide you a general overview of the material. And that's how we pull everything together. And think of lectures as really pulling everything together because you can't do, you can't have hours and hours of lecturing 
uh, because it, we would simply have three classes of psych one and we couldn't do that. And you can't just have 500 or 800 pages of reading material to go ahead and read through because the, we would have to actually go and do that to learn everything. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm trying to find that sweet spot between that detail that I know you want versus uh, not losing you between uh, being being you know, asked to watch a lot of those videos a lot. And that's what it would be if we covered every single thing. So what I'm saying here is that if you have any questions and there's not enough detail uh, in a lecture, please reach out to me and ask those questions, okay? Uh, ask me those questions. Some of you, the details there. Uh, I know this, I've done a lot of evaluations and, and a lot of uh, analytics between uh, asking students what's good, what's not. and a lot of students like the detail and then there's some students that don't they want more so if that's you really reach out to me and let me know and i will certainly provide more layers to the content and in addition again another reason why i try not to go too deep and have hundreds of hours of lecture video is because this is a survey course this is a psychology one course meaning that our goal is to overview every subject now, when you take a psych, when you take a specific psychology class, if you're a major or you want to go deeper into neuroscience, you want to talk, you want to take that or you want to take a, a, a social psychology course, you're going to go in much in much deeper depth when it comes to that. But this is a psych one survey course. We play on the surface a little bit, but we do go deep and we get detailed in certain aspects. If you need more or want more, please reach out to me. But that's the reason why we do those. OK, here's a little suggestion on taking the quizzes when you're when you're taking the quizzes. And again, this the, the quizzes, my approach to teaching is constant questioning. We learn by creating something. So the more you're questioned and asked to recall something, the more deeper that neural pathway will be built. And so you're going to find out that there's there's a lot of questions. And again, I already said some of them are low risk. You can put yourself out there and not have any penalty. And then we start building up to where some of them do have risk. But my recommendation is when you're taking a quiz, whether it's anything, a reading connect question, an untimed uh, low risk quiz, where you can take it multiple times or a time quiz where you can only take it once. As you're taking it and you find out you got a question wrong, maybe write the question out so that you know the type of content and concept you need more work with. So we talk about not wasting mistakes, go out and make mistakes, but take that down, take a picture of it or, or write down the question. And sometimes you'll be provided with the answers. A lot of times you will, sometimes you won't. So you can always reach out to me or go back in the book, go back in the lecture and then readdress that area. And that would be a strong suggestion on my part is to really be mindful when you're taking those quizzes to get the most out of them. So, for example, if it's an untimed quiz and you're just taking it to get the right answer many times, that's a total waste of time and it doesn't serve as a good metric for you to figure out where you're at. So just go in and take it. Just see, you know, let it rip and see how you do without notes, you know, at first. See where you made mistakes, write them down, go back and, and, and really address and study those areas, come back, take it again, you know, if you're allowed to with that kind of assessment or that test. So that, that would be my suggestion is to be really mindful when you're taking the quizzes. And then let me see here. And then to go back to the lectures, my pre-recorded lectures, what we do is, or and just in general, is I start very general. So I start with general psychological concepts. You'll see me lecturing about the generalities of that area. And then as we continue in the course and we continue in with the unit, we work our way through the chapters. You're going to see how then we start to get more focused and we start to get really specific all the way up until your test. And then I, we will also have study guides and those are extremely specific. Right. But the research is really clear on this as well as we don't really want to start with the nuts and bolts and the details. For example, if I just laid out the study guide at first and then you just go into those areas and really try to hammer out those areas then that specificity is just specific to those areas in isolation and we miss a lot of connections. And so that's where, that's why we start really broad and then we start to drill down on the details and we get really specific as we get closer towards the actual exams, okay? 
And then finally, to bring this home, when it comes to studying, you know, how am I going to go about that? That might be a question for you. And that's, that's a little tricky because everybody's different. But you have your reading. You have your reading connect questions. You have lecture videos, right? When you're watching a video or you're reading a lecture, that is when you want to figure out what's best for you. What do you take notes with? How do you take notes? The main thing is the lecture videos, what we cover in there are everything's important, right? So the question is like, well, what should I take notes on? Well, that's again why I try to find that sweet spot with the lecture videos is because if I went into so much depth, you would be overwhelmed. You wouldn't really know what to get down. I really try to cover the main concepts that are aligned to the textbook. And I do bring in many other outside resources and and anecdotes and many other things that come into play, but I try to align it with the textbook so that you're you're really focused. And that's really important when it comes to an online type of platform. So I would say this when it comes to studying. Studying is not reading, okay? You read material first to understand kind of the gist of what's going on. Then you answer your connect questions. You watch lecture videos. You take some notes. And then you study. Studying is what's called deliberate practice. And so my suggestion here is to get note cards or whatever it is that you do. You can even use phones and there's flashcard apps that they have out there, but basic principles of recall. And so if you're working in some kind of concept such as what is psychology, instead of when you're studying, instead of going back and just reading, you don't wanna just read, that's not studying, that's just called mere exposure. It's just a, a false sense that you're, that you're learning when, when in fact you're just being exposed to information. You want to study it. So you actually wanna write down on one side of a card or type it in in your phone, what is psychology? And then flip it over and then write out the definition of psychology and then flip it back over to that question and try to answer it in your head without looking at the answer. And then rep that many times, keep track of it, go back to it. So basically ask yourself the question, what is psychology, scientific study of thoughts, emotions, behaviors, so, so forth and so on. If you can't do that in your head on your own without looking at the notes, then you need to keep practicing. So keep practicing without looking at the notes, look at that note card and then just rep it, rep it, Have, go about three at a time, just shuffle through them as many times as you can. And that's deliberate practice now. That is studying, okay? Many times what we've seen as students, they mistake reading for studying. And we do need to read. You read on the front end to kind of gather the gist and generalities of what's going on, take notes. Then you come back to those notes or you come back to any questions that you've written and you study those. That means you rep them and you recall. So recall means is where you're, you're actually creating it in your head without any specific cues, okay? So that means you're not looking at it and reading it in your head. You're just trying to recall it in your head without having an answer. Now, if you're missing some and you don't really know it, that is when you turn it over and you look at the answer. So that's a basic, basic example of how to really learn and study and really understand the difference between mere exposure and just reading something and what we call elaborate practice, which is, which is really drilling down on that recall. So if you have any questions, let me know on any of this. And this is what I would look at as how to attack this class and get the most out of it. Okay, you guys take care. Bye-bye.